Hi, it's me again. This is 6 or 7 and in this video I will tell you how I created the piece you are currently hearing using only drum sounds. Yeah, that's right. Let me get into it. MuseCore is a great free and open source piece of software that I got acquainted with in 2013. I use it infrequently myself, sometimes for original compositions, at other times to make a transcription of some video game theme, and probably most often to create sheet music for some of my more challenging piano covers. Two of my housemates use the program much more often than I do, as they compose all of their music in it, and they are pretty fervent composers, although they finish pieces much less often than they should. Last Saturday we were looking at the piece that one of us made, when I looked at the note duration palette. Is that the 128th note? In case you didn't know, the note durations frequently used are whole, half, quarter, eighth and sixteenth notes. That there is support for 32nd notes as well seems natural, but that going two steps beyond that amazed me. We decided to try to see how fast such notes would sound. At first we tried pushing the boundary even further by introducing a 9 tuplet into a 128th note. This means that 9 notes would play in the time of the 128th note. Unfortunately this produced no sound at all, although it did make some parts of the program behave a bit funny. In general, the current version of MuseCore does not seem to deal with these extremely fast parts very well, as when I open the file we were using then, I get a load error notifying of some curious time signatures. Anyway, after some more testing we came to the conclusion that there was some boundary at 128 note 7 tuplets, because even when decreasing the tempo, 6 tuplets would play but 7 tuplets wouldn't. When we had come to this conclusion, the one of us operating the mouse and keyboard threw down some notes to see how such a fast song would sound. However, meanwhile, I had been doing some mental arithmetic. You see, the A note below the middle C on the piano is tuned at 430 Hz, or 440 vibrations per second. If you go one octave below that, the frequency halves, so you get 220 Hz. 110, 55 and 27 and a half vibrations per second. Obviously we can perceive all the notes on the piano as pitch when played, however we just figured out that we can play over 100 notes a second in MuseCore. In that case, could we generate tones out of repeated notes? I got to take over the keyboard and mouse and try. On the PC we were using then, the result was not quite the same, but it had a similar effect. Yes, we could perceive the rapidly played concert bass drums as pitch, but no, MuseCore didn't handle it very well and playback was very inconsistent. However, the next day I decided that I would try it again at lower speeds, and thus lower pitches, to give MuseCore more of a chance to keep up. And to my delight, I got a pretty good result. I had also hoped that when exporting to a WAV file, perhaps MuseCore would spend more time on rendering, because I didn't have to do it real time, and the result would be perfect. This turned out not to be the case however. Playback is still inconsistent, and it's hard to show you in what way, because if I am recording, it's even worse, because MuseCore gets to use less processing time. But I decided I'd go for it. I was amazed that I could create tones in a way obviously unintended by the developers, and was reminded of how when I'm computing chiptune, I have access to functionality that the developers of the machine have not intended, but was figured out later by users. I felt a bit like I was pioneering like those hackers were. I quickly figured out a melody on piano that I thought would be fun to listen to and easy to program. I developed it a bit more whilst programming it, and what you see here is a transcription of a full melody. I'm not an expert on time signatures, but if I have transcribed the piece correctly, this is pretty interesting. Maybe I should look into developing this further. I decided to use only 8 notes as I thought it would make the math easier and I got the idea of having every second note stay the same in the octave below the rest from the Bubble Dizzy title theme. Now I had to actually do the rhythm thing. It took me some time to figure out, scribbling data on paper, applying mathematical operations and actually testing a MuseCore before I found the right formulas. When I had done so I decided that it would be worth the effort to code the program to do them for me. Because I had just before been doing arithmetic on my graphic calculator, I just wrote it in there, although I later wondered why I hadn't used Python or C-sharp instead, as it had been a long time since I had done anything in TI Basic. But hey, it is quite a suitable language for short utility programs like this one. You don't need to follow the code, but maybe it would be nice to know what the program does. I can insert the frequency I want into this program, I looked up the piano key frequencies on the web, and the program would return the corresponding BPM, beats per minute, and the required amount of notes. Because if you use the same amount of drum hits for every note, 
the high notes would be shorter than the low ones. I let the program return the powers of two required for the length instead of the exact amount because he had made a pallet file that allowed me to quickly assemble these. I wasn't going to enter over 100 notes myself for every note. Being under the impression that it was not possible to change tempo midway through a tuplet, I rounded off note amounts to the nearest four. It turns out it is possible, but I assume that the duration deviations in this piece are less than those of a professional piano player, so it probably would have been a fruitless hassle to be more precise. I had had the idea of adding a bass note halfway through the track since I started working on it, but hadn't probably thought through how to implement it. You see, it is not possible to let different instruments play at different tempos, so you cannot just have different instruments playing different notes. Looking at it now, I think the possibilities are probably greater than I considered while developing this piece. The only way of variation that I had thought of was playing in a lower octave, by doubling the duration of the notes. To make it work well I had to redo part of the piece, which was made a bit trickier because of it being impossible to copy measures including tempo notations. But by now you would probably like to hear the tune again. I do hope you do. Here you see the entire piece. It looks a bit crazy, doesn't it? The notation is a mess here and there, but I think that for this experiment it really doesn't matter. Here's the full piece at regular speed. Isn't that really cool? <laughs> this piece is just a proof of concept. I did not spend a long time composing it and I left it short. This idea could be expanded. I could have added actual percussion for example. It is also possible to create more elaborate second voices. If you play a triplet over a quadruplet you get a perfect fourth and if you play a doublet over a triplet you get a perfect fifth. I did not realize this while composing the theme but it does make perfect sense considering the harmonic series. It is also easily possible to make a piece with a varied rhythm. If I hadn't already decided on having the melody consist of 8th notes, I would have programmed in the ability to specify desired note duration. However, I do not think I am going to pursue this technique of audio synthesis further. I encourage you to try and have a bit of fun with it if you are intrigued watching this video, but I must warn you that MuseCore is obviously not meant to be playing notes this fast. I thought at first that my laptop might not be fast enough, but I tried the same things on a strong desktop PC and had the same undesirable results. For example, when I changed the drum sample set of the lead to a different one, it sounded like this. Ah uh, yeah. I could let you hear several more examples of similar issues, but I think you'd rather not. The issue in this case definitely wasn't the PC's power, as Task Manager showed CPU usage at just 10%. I guess MuseCore itself just doesn't realize that it needs more, or doesn't know how to ask for more, or something like that. I even looked into the advanced settings, but couldn't find anything to let it ask more processing time. But hey, it's not unlikely that I am the first person to ever run into this issue. In any case, this was an interesting experiment that, as one of my housemates put it, actually put theory into practice. And I hope you enjoyed watching this documentary of it. Thank you for watching and God bless.